And three, two, we are live. Episode 17 and No One Told Me Hockey Podcast. Jack, what is going on today? Not much, like I say every day. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing good. We got the first warm weekend of the spring, summer. So played some pickleball just now. I probably, my back, my lower back, I'm getting to the age now where like I need to do a dyno. I should be doing a dyno before I hop into any physical activity, but I don't. And I hop into it, and now I'm paying the consequences right now because my lower back and knees are shot. I got a question and, for you now. And it's well, it's not like I scale back like my effort either. Like with the age, like the effort and you know moving around is still there. It's just like now I'm just way stiffer. Oh, I got a terrible, question for you. Terrible. Coming okay. off, coming off a pickleball court, mm-hmm. what hurts more for you right now, the knees or the ankles? Mm. for me it's the ankles coming off like a it's, like if we're playing basketball yeah ankles I, like I know what you're saying no it's my right knee every time right knee just takes a beating <laughs> so oh, dude. are you a, are you playing righty yeah i play righty so I, I step hard a lot on the right side to like step it, are you doing shots. doubles singles it's a lot of ground to cover singles so um still. we were playing we did a little bit of doubles today and then uh singles i yeah we did both Mainly singles, though. You can't be in the kitchen. Champ, you guys stay out of the kitchen. You know your role, buddy. Um, for those for those listening, the kitchen and pickleball is like the little section on yeah. either side of the net. It's about what a six. It's probably six feet. No, it's like three or four. Three, three or four. four. Feet. Stay yeah. out of the kitchen. Stay. Be out of there. Do you, have you played pickleball? Do you play? I I dabble. I dabble. I, I would dominate you. No, I think I would be. I no. would probably beat you. You'd probably return your racket. No, I think I'd probably, if I think about it hard enough, I think I'd probably skunk you. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'd play yeah. left-handed. Oh, God. I've dabbled. So, I've dabbled. We'll, we'll get back to that. We'll play at some point. Yeah. I, I, you Like last summer, I was gaming it pretty hard. I was playing pretty hard. So I'm getting back in my groove now, now that the skiing season's kind of over. So I got my, I'm in the golf, golf season and pickleball right now. Golfing. Yeah. Going on a big golf trip this weekend. St. George, Utah. It's right by Vegas. Well, it's still like an hour and a half from Vegas, but it's in that area down there. So playing three days of golf. It's going to be fun. That is going to be awesome. It's going to be be really fun. How are you doing? What are you up to? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, Academic and hockey year is kind of wrapping up now that the junior leagues are kind of closing up. Uh, The North American League is in their playoffs right now. Um, So kind of waiting on some guys here and there, but uh, that's wrapping up, so I'm actually headed home to Florida on Tuesday. Hell yeah, right for the heat. Just get know, ready for the heat, man. Sunscreen. <laughs> Sunscreen, oh. here I come. How about how do you feel about the humidity? How how do you handle it's the humidity? It's horrible. There is nothing. I One of my most uncomfortable positions in life, I believe, in, is when you're growing up in Florida and you take a morning shower and mm. then you walk out to your car. Yeah. It's about 40 feet probably, but somehow you've gone from being as clean as possible, right? You come out of the shower to being just a mucky, dirty, disgusting human by the time you sit in your car. The amount of swass build up in that, oh. in that, in those 12 strides is insane. I used to struggle going to school, <laughs> like going to school in the morning. Oh, I bet. Like, like I didn't know what I would have to wear all black because I didn't want the sweat. I didn't want this. You know, you know what color you know what color you can't wear in high gray. school. And I learned gray. this the hard way. The light gray. Oh. Dude, oh. I had these pair, oh. I had these pair of light gray sweatpants. And in the winter, you know, like in Chicago, like they turn the heat on in the building. But so I had gym class, and then obviously I'm going game seven in gym class. Like yeah. I'm playing yeah. like I'm playing yeah. basketball, like I'm going game seven. There, I just I can't turn it off. So I'm going game seven. Then I hop back into my my outfit for the day i'm leaking throw oh. these gray sweatpants on i go to math class i'm sitting there and i'm i'm sweating bullets right now i get up i got these gray sweatpants on i got a sweat skid mark stain right through my ass crack big as ever i've never <laughs> been so humiliated in my life after that i haven't worn a pair of light gray sweatpants since then not it's even sad kidding. because it's it not me even- too i will not i will not like <laughs> Right, you go into Lululemon, right, and they got all these great colors, right? It's like yeah, light, a lot blue. of light colors, a lot of I'm light not, colors. I'm looking for the darkest dark you got. Give me something yeah. that I could wear in the heat, and I'm not thinking about what I'm looking like. Oh yeah, do you do you run hot? 
like on average? Are you are you running hot? I don't want to jinx myself by saying this, and I know that by saying it, I'm going to jinx myself. But <laughs> I used to sweat a lot. Like I'm talking, I would need a hoodie over everything. I've yeah, kind of yeah. kind of grown out of that a bit. But or is it been, just because you've yeah. been out of Florida? I could be the Florida thing too. So I could have Ooh, a bad, bad you're... month coming my way. At least you, you know, you're not going to school every day, like seeing a bunch of, Dude, you know, you know, you'll be, high school was tough. Oh it yeah. You got sweaty, gotta, sweaty days. The gym class, it was terrible. If you had like gym class first period oh, oh or like hockey, first, second hockey period, first period, hockey oh. shower, bus ride to school on a, on a yellow school bus. Oh, no really AC. Hot. Yeah. And, and, and then, oh. and then the pants were, the pants were like khaki shorts like that's almost worse than gray dude that <laughs> tra- yeah and those trap the heat in like those oh. things have no circulation yeah that khaki you better watch out with khaki. i'm hovering, you, I'm you, hovering you, on the bus seat because you don't want that <laughs> stick you're hovering well, and and on those bus seats too like those things are those things don't have any circulation no. so that's just like hot ass on hot leather <laughs> you are in a bad spot at that point bad spot you are staying not- away Staying away yeah. from that. Um, okay. I don't know how we got to, how did we get to that? I'm not the sure. Humidity in the, oh, the in, humidity in Florida. Staying yeah. away from it. I'm but I will say things. one of my favorite things, uh, okay, favorite things about like Florida <laughs> in terms of like the summer is like, like if favorite you. Favorite things about sweat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about being sweat. If I'm going to be sweaty, I like, like when I'm working out, like I like to be leaking. Like it yep. makes me feel like I am doing a great job at what I'm doing. I, I'm putting in the work. So like, I worked out there in the summer for a month that, uh, you know, and um, <clears throat> we were doing like outdoor plyometrics and stuff and like a lot of med ball work and being out there, like leaking outside and stuff. That was, that was great. I like that a lot. There's a, uh, but, I was going to say, there's two brothers in Florida. Both of them played at Bentley. Shout out breakfast club underscore hockey underscore. So flow on Instagram. Mm-hmm. They, run these workouts outside their house it's uh, such great people two of the best people i've ever met huh? we should get them on the pod dude they, i they love to hop on they're oh, such great we should people. get them on that'd be great well, regardless they i'll go to their house when i'm home right get a like a little workout in i'm not kidding you within 15 minutes i am just covered like it might, it's like i went swimming just because yeah. the sun is just baking down on you right in front of the house all we have is a couple dumbbells in a street that's all you need. Yep, that's all you need. You kind of feel like you, you you're all loose up. You feel like you're kind of oh. ripped up. You know, you feel like you can look down. You see your abs a little bit. Your fire gets you going Absolutely. a little bit. <laughs> that Absolutely. Florida, that Florida humidity will get you going. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. Speaking of that, what do you now that you're going home and stuff? What are you looking forward to most in the summertime? Summertime, I would say uh, first off to see my family. Right, number one. Uh, number two, yeah. I actually have. Uh, my friend from that played at UND that I went to go visit, he's actually yeah. going to come down with me. This will be now the fourth year in a row oh, that nice. we've done like a Florida trip kind of. Yeah. Um, and we kind of just like detached from hockey completely, which is like nice, like go to the beach, mm-hmm. like watch movies. Like we don't really talk about hockey at all. We just kind of like yeah. go fishing and stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty nice. fun. Looking forward to that. Um, and like you would tell the weather, right? Like, um, I haven't worn shorts probably in, in, I don't know, four months. I don't even want to see what those legs look like. You probably can't even, they're probably oh. as white as the wall. <laughs> there was a, okay, I don't, I mean, people are going to listen to this, but there was a time I looked at myself in the mirror the other day. I was pink like Patrick Starr. I probably am pink like Patrick Starr. <laughs> you say that every time we get on the cast. Every too. time. I don't know what <laughs> it is, but it's the literally lighting. pink like, it's the lighting. I'm convinced it's the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> I need some sun. Say the oh, I know. I'm. I'm happy. I'm starting to get some now. It's been. It's been good. I already got a little. You see that? Yeah, it looks good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, but you tan. That's the thing. Is well, we'll yeah. Work. If me and you both sat in the sun, and people listening, you know the feeling. You got that buddy. You sit in the sun, right? Mm. You're covered in towel. I, I, me. As You're a, covered in towel. Yeah, I'm covered in yeah. towels, head to toe, pretending to enjoy it. Yeah. And you you got the tarp off, right? You're actually tanning a bit. I'm like a 70s Italian guy in like the Speedo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like a tarp off. Patrick Stark. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. So I got another question for you because this just happened to me and I think about this kind of a lot. So 
do you want me to give you my situation first or do you want me like where I got this from? Give me and your then, situation first. Okay. So the question is, to what extent do you go to avoid people? Right? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I'm yeah. locked See, and loaded uh, right now. Okay. And that's what I figured. So I'm getting so we have these neighbors across the street for, across the way from us. And this guy's coming like when we first moved in, like knocked on the door twice to introduce himself but it was at fucking nine at night so i was like i'm not answering the door and i talked to him through the video camera i was like oh sorry like i'm on a meeting right now like i can't open the doors nine at night i said i was on a meeting with a chinese manufacturer are you kidding me so okay i lied so bad. are you telling me that your <laughs> new neighbor came to introduce himself maybe he had cookies maybe he didn't who knows he didn't i can see the camera through it he could have been in his pocket True. And well, yeah, and you had a chat with him through the ring doorbell. <laughs> yeah, and I lied to why I couldn't open the door. Oh. <laughs> I don't but know if not, that. I don't okay, know if that, that's like IQ a but million. That's not even or IQ I'm thinking, zero. I thought it was great because like I was talking to him through. This isn't even my avoiding story yet. That is a major avoidance. I literally told him I was on the in a meeting with a Chinese manufacturer at nine at night, and that's why I couldn't. Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> All he wanted to do was introduce himself. What if he listens to Dude, the pod? It's nine. I, what if he listens I to the pod? Highly seeing him, I highly doubt that. Dude, Could but like, don't, I don't. If I see you in the hallway, like, sure, like, hey, what's up? Like, nice to meet you. But the whole door knock thing, it's a little. I don't know. It's a little invasive to me. But Fair. so to so today. Now that was months ago, and I I've said hi to him one time, but now that I've you know been walking around, so today I see him. I'm getting I'm going to open the door by my to get into the apartment complex is locked, and I'm like fumbling through my bags. So I have three of them I'm looking for my keys, and him and two girls, like they're like, I don't know one they looked like one of them was his mom or something. They come you know walking right behind me. I'm like, oh, do one of you guys have a key? And I at first I didn't recognize it was him. And so one of the, he didn't say anything. The, he swiped it and we opened the door. Now I'm trailing them and I know he lives across this way from me, like directly across. And they're about to go into their apartment. So I fall off a little bit, start walking slow. And I walk and in, go into the stairwell and I just sit there for like three minutes so I can wait until they get into their door. So I don't have to do that like awkward communication small talk at the door i totally avoid it and just go in the stairwell and just stand there is that a little much or no the the stairwell <laughs> is a bit much but i i, I can't say like, my so my situation in comparison to this would be the elevator I, i'm oh. often not trying to share the elevator if i don't have like i don't want to oh. be stuck in there with somebody i don't know oh so like what I'll, either, do, what I'll do what i'll do what i'll do sometimes is like if I see, like, I'll do the real quick, I'll hit the button really quick. Yeah, if, like, I yeah, see them, like, if they're, like, if they're, like, 20 feet away from me, I'm, like, getting in there, I'm, like, tapping the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> me too. I'm cl quick, close, quick, close, quick, close, quick, 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 The most, yeah. one of the most awkward interactions of all time is when somebody, and people do do this. I do not do this. If you're listening, please do not be this person. When you get to the elevator and it's closing and you put your arm through it, <laughs> you know what I'm talking you know what I'm talking I think about? the people only stop, yeah I think the only the time I think the only time that is appropriate is if like you're say you're at a resort right and there's only two elevators on like a 60 floor hotel or something yep. where it's like they're rarely coming like yeah go ahead stick your arm in there but if we're on an elevator where this thing's coming every oh. 30 seconds you just wait that out agree <laughs> I, yeah. it, but it'll be sometimes it's like even it's even like an inch or two from shutting, and all of a sudden a foot, thing. And it, <laughs> oh, if up. you do a foot, if you do a foot, oh, that is, or a leg, I think that or might be worse. Limb. I think that's worse. Any limb. How do you know the sensor's not working? Can slice your arm off. Now I'm sitting. Oh, I almost saw that at the airport. I almost saw that at the airport. Those trams. Some guy tried to stick his arm in to stop it for because this or the lady tried to do it because the guy was coming. That thing has no sensors. It just okay. kept shut, and she literally pulled out by like a fingernail. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You so can't. I'm avoiding. So you're avoiding people. I'm avoiding people. I don't. I mean, I'm look, big time. I like. To I do even do it at thing. work. Like when I go to the bathroom, 
I go to the bottom floor one. We don't even work on that level. So I go down there. Even if I have to pee, just nice and quiet. Don't have to have the awkward bathroom. Have you ever been in like an area oh. where like you're with someone, but like you kind of, you kind of know them, but not really. And then like you're in the bathroom and they walk in. And it's like you, you do that pass by like the pass by. You're like, what do you say? Wait, I have a question for you. <laughs> when you're in the bathroom and you're doing your business, whether it be one or two mm-hmm. and yeah. someone knocks, what, what mm. do you say? Do you say anything? Do you say occupied? You have. Do you say someone occupied? In no, occupied. What are you a robot? You say one second. Uh, you say one moment. I say, uh, say? if I were, all right, give me knock. Give me I'll knock. give you a little. Wait, wait. Okay. You're, uh, uh, someone's in here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but, wait, are you saying? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Are you saying? <laughs> With wait, that, wait, with let me redo it. Let me, no, 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 no. Tone, let me redo it. With that no, tone, no, no, no. So, it came out. All right, <laughs> someone's in here. Someone's no, in here. Re, redo it. Redo it. All right, all right, all right. All right. This is probably what I would do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is that better? Oh, oh yeah. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now okay, okay, like, okay. Now we're having a conversation. Did I open up the conversation through the yeah, door? That's what I said. Saying, just, yeah. But I have a question for you now. Now, now right, whoa, whoa, the hold on, knocking. hold on, hold on. All right, ready? Ready? Are you doing me? One moment. <laughs> One moment. One double. If, oh, hold on, hold on. If they do, if they, all right, go ahead, go ahead, ready? Go ahead. Okay, go. All right, all right, ready, ready? I'm going to give you a situation. All right, ready? <laughs> One second. One sec. You've been in there for about 10 minutes. How much longer are you going to be? I, have you had the, have you had Chipotle lately? <laughs> Uh, that's funny. That's funny. But I have a question for you now, right? Now you're the say you're the, <laughs> the knocker. double knock. The double knock. <laughs> All right, say you're the knocker. You yeah, knock yeah, once, yeah. they say something. Do you say sorry for knocking? Sorry, sorry. No, I, sorry. no, no. They know you're in there. Sorry. <laughs> no, I just walk away because they don't know who I am. Deep. I just walk away. I feel like there needs to be a closing. Now, one moment. Sorry, yeah. done. No, 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 no. Not, not now, this, though. Now. What if it's boop, 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 one moment? Now I don't hear anything. Maybe that person's getting angry. Maybe they're going to burst through the window or burst through the door. No, 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 no. You just do the walk away. They have no idea who you are. Now, if you knock and they're in there and they say, you whatever, are you waiting outside the door? Are no, you going to like finding, sit back finding down? Another bathroom, you go- finding another bathroom. Oh, that's the worst when you walk out and the person's standing there. Now you're doing eye contact. Oh, and maybe, maybe and now, maybe now, relevant. now. And now you know they're about to walk into an absolute bomb of the yeah, shit you just took. It's it could <laughs> knock out a small child. It could take down a small child if there's one who walks in. Oh, that is funny. That is funny. Oh, okay, so bathrooms are avoiding people. Bathrooms. Yeah. What else is going on? Um, what else is going on? Okay, so I want to talk to you about this. Um, so I told you this last week off the air. But I am going to be coaching a high school hockey team for like it's like a spring summer. So there's there's now we're doing a practice before the first game, but it will be like one practice every like maybe two or three weeks. So it's not like we're practicing multiple times a week. So I'm coaching the JV and varsity team. I think there's four of us coaching. Technically, I'm the head coach, but like it's all shared. Like I'm not going to be like trying to like overbear guys. So. Now that you have coached a full season, you've been on a bench. I have never been on a bench. So what 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 was your biggest takeaways, do you think, of the this year that you just had on the bench? Oh, that's a very question. I first off, I think you're gonna love it. I think any coach listening or player that's listening, uh being behind the bench Ray, is exhilarating, right? More so than mm. you'd imagine. Like I think at first I was like, oh, like where they kind of detached from the game, but realistically, like you're right there. Like there are games where I was sweating, games where I was like, right. it's, I'm involved. You're involved. So that's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah. I would say, like, the first thing that you should seek to do, and something that I think is so important, and something that I learned from my boss, right, 
is attempting to establish some degree of culture and not in terms mm-hmm. of like everybody needs to be working toward a championship but more so like these guys need to know each other right like now you have a new team you're basically working with like a new group of kids like they right. need to know you <laughs> you got to know them whether that be through some games like pre-practice even like maybe some icebreakers or something or like a mm-hmm. conversation i think yeah. that could go like such a long way the the tough thing about it though is like for for well obviously for like you in college and stuff like you guys are with each other like you're you're with them every single day at the beginning of the year and like you have them you're able to build relationships with them for like a month before the practices even start <clears throat> whereas like this i have like one practice to like yeah. you know try to try to get to know guys and stuff so that'll be interesting i get what i totally agree with what you're saying like you want to build that relationship get to know them more than just as a hockey player 100 right, like percent. build those relationships yeah it's just going to be a little tough with like how how it it's not a real it's not a regular season so even that'll be did, interesting even if you do. did like pre first practice two truths and a lie or something like get these kids talking like sometimes okay. you just sit there in the that's room. a good idea like sometimes you just sit there yeah. in a room and like everybody like sure there's probably four or five kids that know each other and they're talking a bunch or even if everybody right. knows each other there's still four or five kids leading the conversation like yeah. to get everybody kind of maybe voting on something or talking about hockey or doing something could go a long way for the practice that's a good idea i like that i think that i definitely think that's probably a good idea to do um in terms of yeah because i know there's some new kids coming in but then there's also kids who have been around but then also every coach that <clears throat> that we're go that i'm coaching with is also new so yeah. in terms for us too yeah for them to get to know us too <clears throat> for sure now that's a good idea are you going are you going to right so these kids are, ba- i'm bag like skating them day one I was going to say high school, high school. So the youngest kids, no. probably what, 14? Some kids of them are 18? still in eighth grade. Like they're coming okay, so in. 13, enough, 13 yeah. through 18. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to provide them with a practice plan? Yes or no? Yeah. So this is kind you want to hear my thoughts on a practice plan for the first yes, practice? And then I'm going to get, and then I'm going to suggest okay. something. Yeah. 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 Okay. So first off, so I don't know any of these players. I don't know one thing about any of these players, their skill. I don't even know how good Utah, I mean, you know, how good Utah high school hockey is. So first thing I want to do, just get guys moving. Cause I'm sure some of these kids haven't skated for a while. Um, so I want to get puck touches. So I was thinking like a horseshoe drill and then maybe like a, uh, on all four blues, like some sort of like, maybe like an around the world drill, just get guys moving puck touches calling for pucks presenting their stick for pucks next what i want to do is hop split up so now i can see get into like okay like see how the defensemen are and how the forwards are so maybe do like some two on like a two on one drill you know or two on one then a three on one three on two drill i kind of like those ones where you kind of go up and down the ice and then what i was thinking of is getting into some mini games and then a scrimmage at the end just to see how guys play like how you know how they naturally play um with each other and their skill wise and stuff like that yeah what are your thoughts i i would say i love that i love that no no i love that uh right there's like you just kind of touched on in those first couple practices with your team and with i mean anybody who's listening that has a team right there is some degree of evaluation that has to occur right because you just said like we don't really know anything about the kids <laughs> no so like that's clue. kind of ex- it's exciting and then yeah as you're building that plan right like last thing you can do is draw up a complicated drill and then it's like oh boy like they can't do it so then they're messing up and yeah yeah right, right right but i would i would say right i would sandwich the practice with like two fun games so i would start the practice with either a small area game with music or a small area game with a shootout or some sort of loser does one lap and then end the practice with some sort of shootout slash game. Now, the reason I say that is because too often than not, and I think that this is true, kids of all ages now are, there's a little bit of anxiety that comes with practice, right? It's like, oh yeah, God, yeah, like, big is time. He gonna sk- he's going to skate us. Like, as a joke, it'd be hard. It's going to be easy. 
if you show them a practice plan where they're visually seeing right game to start game to end then it's like oh that's awesome like we get to play right away and then you do the practice and then it's like oh we get to play at the end too right there's like that they're going yeah, into yeah. it knowing like what's to come right 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 do you think you should get a flow drill in first or no um in college we usually start we started with some sort of mini game i mean i i kind of like I kind of like did too in. sometimes. It's, it's it could it's go t- either way. T- some guys liked it, some guys didn't. <clears throat> yeah, but I do. I, I think do energy early, with, energy late. Yeah, I, I no, I definitely agree with that one hundred percent. Um, I definitely think putting. I might do a flow drill beforehand, but I definitely think putting a mini game at the beginning like that is a good idea. Yeah, like get absolutely. them loose and have fun. Like it's also at the same time it's like spring. Like it's not yeah. meant to be you know bag skating and blah 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 like it's meant to like have fun but also like work hard and like be able to work on things exactly exactly yeah get get a bit better absolutely right 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 do you have any other suggestions um sandwiching the practice i want to get your opinion what do you oh what do you okay what do you think i want to get your opinion on this really quick what do you think about like going over systems with them like not because um, like, I don't want to do it during the practice. Like I don't. I want to be moving. I always I hated when coaches would talk at the board for like ten minutes. That yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like that. I think just going like, over the resp- What I think going over the what responsibilities you want each guy to do prior to the first game, maybe a couple practices in off the ice and then maybe well, doing well, a drill. Well, well, we have one practice and then we play on Thursday. We practice on Wednesday. Play on Thursday. So I think so there's pre, I think pre-game Thursday, you just need to say like, this is this just draw ups because realistically, look like, they're probably not going to do it, but realistically, no. give them some sort of structure so that they leave there thinking, okay, like there is something called a man on man D zone, there is something called a one two two, like yeah, some of these yeah, kids yeah. may not know that. Right. No, I would agree with that. I I definitely think probably before the first game, and it's like well. Do I cover everything? Because then I could go into like, okay, here's our uh, face, maybe not face off plays, but like, oh, here's our um, D zone. Here's our uh, neutral zone. Here's our O zone. Here's our power play. Here's our power play breakout. Here's yeah, our you penalty. Don't need to, I don't, like, think, it's you don't like, need that. That's just a lot. Yeah. So it's like, maybe I think I with face off the- plays, I think with face off plays with like young high school kids and like youth kids, I think like if you break, break it out like right pre game, you like ask them for a name you're like boys boys like, gir- like boys or girls right like, what do you yeah. want to name your what do you want to name this face up like then they're going to yell out like pasta burger something or right, okay like when you guys say pasta like this is what you're going to do on the ice and that and then it's like yeah. in their minds right before the game it's like oh like we're going to run pasta we're going to run pasta and then they, they're attempting that like throughout the game yeah 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 right 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 like two of them you think two yeah, like one defensive and one offensive. Maybe like a D zone one right. where you're going for a breakaway and an offensive zone one where you're going for a goal. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, so um, what do you want to get my thought on? I was going to say, I just, gonna say? I, yeah, yeah, I just brought it up a little bit. What is your opinion on music during practices? Well, I remember, I remember in juniors, obviously this is a little different, but like pregame skate, like when I played in Topeka, we – as soon it was cool like at home games especially as soon as the first guy stepped on the ice it was a set playlist the music hit and like it was unreal like got you fired up like felt like legit like fun um i think i i personally don't have a problem with music at all i i kind of like it in a sense obviously it can't be like overbearing where it's like can't hear guys calling for the puck and stuff or maybe situational where it's like, okay, at the beginning of practice or when we're playing mini games, we'll put on some music. But when we're doing like D zone and it's going to be a stop and start, you know, whistle, like kind of walk through some things. Yeah. Maybe probably not have the music on. So I personally, I, I, I like music. I think it helps you can get in a flow a little bit and have fun and get your mind off things if you're not doing well or something or get you into it more. So what do you think on that? I like it at situation yeah, I- wise. Yeah, exactly. I think it's very situational based. Like some people will play the whole practice. I don't think that's necessary. I think mm-hmm. like you could have a couple, like at school, we would have certain drills that came with music. 
So like, yeah, we saw yeah. a certain like conditioning skate. We knew that conditioning skate came with a playlist. And like, right. like we saw like a certain like warm up drill, like, oh man, like this is the one where they play like blank in the background. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, think that's I love that. Cool. Yeah, I do I too. It really just cool. gives you a little bit different element to practice. Cause like, especially when you're in the juniors in college and pro level, I'm sure like practices can get stagnant and feel like a job. Like you're doing, going out there every day, get, putting on your equipment. It can be, you know, takes a toll on you. So like having those, like, you know, mix ups like that in your, in your practice can be good for guys. I think bring, yeah. bring and the like energy, a little bit. bring the energy, especially when like, I know we would do like a, some certain conditioning skates at the end of practice and uh-huh. like guys are usually worried for that. Right. You, you kind of think about the whole practice. Oh and yeah. Now, that's like, the worst music, to see on the sheet. But right away, right now you got music involved. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this is kind of cool. Like now it's not like yeah. fear. It's more like excitement. Like, Oh, like I get to do this skate. Like not, you know, that I, oh, yeah, God, I, have to do this I, skate. I I definitely think there's like a sh- like shit. I still have to do the skate, but like at the same time, like it's kind of nice. There's going to be music on like, you know, it won't be too bad. Like I think it takes off a little bit of that, like stress of like having to skate for sure. I like that, with, especially with bagging. Like if you're bagging, there's nothing worse than all like dead silence and just hearing your own thoughts and stuff. Like, you know, when well, you're running on a treadmill, try running on a, try running on a treadmill with and without music. Like it's oh definitely a lot God. better with music. 100%. We did, one, we did one skate where our coach would ask us like what the name of the song was and the singer. And if we <laughs> didn't unreal. get it right, we if we didn't get it right. We had to skate, but the songs were like old rock. Like we didn't get a single one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's like, unreal. Just set you guys up. Yeah. He knows yeah. they're skating every one of them. That, what if you just yeah, had like, exactly. a, like, like a lot of kids on my team, like knew so much music from like the seventies, eighties and stuff. Like, I think we would have been good at like, it. Some, like we would always people. turn to the kid. We'd always turn to the rock. Kid. Yeah. There's like, there's what like two or three think? kids. Yeah. There's like two or three <laughs> kids. <laughs> then he doesn't get it right. We're like, what the, what the hell? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's awesome. So I think it would be good for me too, to like get a different, like, it's going to be interesting to be like on the other side of the bench and get a perspective um 100%. on kids and like see how i respond to maybe a kid giving like attitude or like you know not listening or you know and see how i approach that um i think it's going to be really interesting i'm gonna i say i'm gonna be like calm and cool now which i think i will be for the most part but like definitely gonna be, you know reactionary stuff too yeah i think you will be I, it'll be great I, it's oh one thing one good. thing i keep thinking of too is uh the refs how am I going to handle the refs? Should I, should I, I got to rip into one at least one time to say I did it. You know what you should do? Just like pre-game, just one game pre game. I don't know who told me this story. It may have been on checkouts. I don't know. I don't think it was though. That like the ref would call you the coach before the game would call the ref over. Yeah. And then they like talk like well during warm ups and be like, Look, like we're about second period. If we're playing bad, I'm gonna shred you. And then you, I just want you to look at me and be like, Enough is enough and then I'll stop. So oh. then like you just so it's like a set thing yeah. that, that you're doing yeah. with the ref. To get the boys fired up a little bit, like show that you're engaged and you're into it even though you're not playing good. Oh, that's yeah, unreal. Exactly. <laughs> I think it was one of my men's teammates that actually told me that. He's that would be great. That would be great. Um, so that's pretty much all I got with the coaching uh stuff. It's yeah, obviously I'll keep you updated on that. Um yeah, as we move along, first practice Wednesday and then game Thursday. So I'm excited. Back back. What is the team name? Yeah. Uh Farmington High School. I don't know the I don't know the mascot or anything. The fighting farmers. <laughs> the fight yeah the fighting back are you homes. okay 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 i got one for you i got a question all right i have right. to ask are you gonna let them do a cheer in between the periods or at the net like a one two three farmer i'm gonna let the we'll see who we'll see who prevails on leading i don't know if they do that stuff like go to the net and do they do that but, in but, AAA but, but, in high school yeah, and stuff do they oh, go to yeah. the net Either the net or they, the bench. If they want to do it, 
sure. I like that. Did you I do like, it in I college? Think... Did you do it in college? We at the net pregame. Well, yeah, at the Everybody. net, but like if you call the timeout. No, no, no. I don't remember. I don't think so. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Why do I feel like we did, but I don't think we did. Maybe, There's maybe, no way. I, maybe sometimes. I don't, I don't know. I, don't I don't hope remember. not. I hope not. Maybe like a one, low two, three. Key one. One, one, two, two, three two, Raiders. Uh, one, two, three Raiders. I don't know. That's like on 20. Yeah, three, two, one Raiders. One, two, three Raiders. But I'm like 25. I don't need to be doing a chant. I like the yeah, Nefron one, though. Nefron. Like, I don't fine. know. Like, are the are the Pittsburgh Penguins before the game going 3 2 1 Penguins? No. <laughs> no chance, dude. No. There's no way. Any of that shenanigans. No way. In time. Could you imagine if you saw an NHL team in between a timeout go, all right, one, two, three, Senators? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, I mean, but it's good for camaraderie. Yeah. You got, you got the best colleges huddling up around the net, doing their thing. Yeah, that that's just built into college like hockey. It's just a thing that they do, you know. And every and like in college, did you guys stand on the line, goal line? We did. Yeah, we stood on the line for national anthem. Yeah, right, right. That's also like a thing that like everyone goes out on the line. Whereas like the NHL, no. At least for a lot of teams, like they only go starting lineup. Same with juniors. Yeah. Like if a team did, wait, did. Some teams I played on did bench. Some did on the line. We did, we did bench. 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 Right. Yeah. Most did bench, I think. Like Fairbanks did all on the line. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Play. It's kind of hit or miss. But I don't know. I'll, I'd let them do it. It's not like I'm going to. Why? They're like 13 years old. It's not going to be like. That's why I'm asking. You got to be, pre- you okay. be prepared for everything. You're going to be prepared for a lot. I'm not going to tell them to do that, though. I'll be like, why didn't we do a breakdown? What? Oh, yeah. Who's leading oh, this team? Okay. okay Who's okay, leading this question. team? I got another question this this team. coaches and players out there. What is going to be your first pregame speech? Oh, so Good one. I think, I think my, my, the, so I've been thinking about this. The, the, one of the things I want to set is like, okay, this is spring. This is a time for guys to get comfortable playing with each other, to have fun, um, but to also develop. And like, at the same time, like if you, you know, take this seriously, um, you know, work on things that you want to get better at, but like, take it seriously. Like these are real games. They're, you know, they're meant to be fun, but also like, you know, if you're going to be out here. You might as well, you know, take it seriously and, you know, try to compete and win. I think is like kind of my, like, it's like a balance of like, yeah, it's spring hockey, but like have fun and stuff. But like, also like you're out here. So like, you might as well put in the effort and not dick around. Now, are you going to, are you going to give them a little story? I like, I like putting in a couple stories in there. Let them sit with some. I got an example of one. If you want one, all right. Want I one. want it. I want it. I want it. All right. So I want to hear it. You're talking. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Yeah. I'm also not what a big I? like speech guy in like front of people. I don't say too it's much. Part of it. It's part of it. The I, oh, I know. I know. Cooper, I know. John Cooper is one of the best public speakers in in the, I've ever seen. It. This guy. He's won three two Stanley Cups. Right. Two Stanley right. Cups. Yeah. So, yeah. So right. here's my here's what I'm gonna go with. And you maybe you could steal this. You could steal this. I probably will. So go in there, check how they're doing, boys. How we doing? Every good, good. Say, uh, have you guys ever heard the story of a uh, chicken and the uh, pig? Maybe like chicken. You will probably see some smiles. Right, you'll see some smiles around the room. Little taps. Maybe some confused faces. Maybe like when you eat breakfast in the morning, you know you got eggs on your plate. You got some ham. You got eggs on your plate and you got some ham. Now you're going to see a couple more smiles, right? Guys are going to start tapping each other. Maybe they're still confused. Maybe they're still confused. Oh, they're definitely because I am. Yeah. And they're going to be like, you know what? You know what? When you look at hockey players, you got some of them that want to be committed, right? It's cool, right? It's commitment, right? I'm committed to this college, I'm committed to playing. It's awesome. And then you got some players that are willing to sacrifice, to sacrifice it all. And now guys are starting to maybe, maybe the smarter ones, maybe they're connecting the dots. You see a little bit more smiles. Now you hit them with the little punchline. Go on that plate. That chicken was committed to laying an egg, right? He was committed. But that pig sacrificed. <laughs> Just sacrificed everything to be on that plate. Let's be pigs out there tonight, not chickens. And, uh, Just walk out. Nuts. And walk out. That's pretty good, right? 
<laughs> that was good. I see. I, I don't, I, one of my, the thing I struggle with, with like that type of stuff is my delivery. Like you have good delivery on it. Me, if I did that story, my delivery would be <laughs> awful. Like, you know, when I, I do a really good job of getting my point across when like, I am like, I have to be like pissed off or like where I'm not even like thinking about what I'm saying. It's just like coming off the top of my dome. You know what I mean? Yeah, just get it has it. to be like that. Like, when I like overthink things and stuff, it's just like, ah, shit, I sound, I feel like I sound like an idiot right now. <laughs> you could get those kids sacrificing it all after that speech. And then they go, I home know. And like, mom, dad, they do you ever hear a story of chicken and the pig. Like, what is <laughs> I got the mom saying? and dad's asking me about it. Oh, yeah, that's unreal. Exactly. The chicken and the pig. Okay. Sacrifice. Yeah, maybe I commitment. should hit him. We want sacrifice. We want sacrifice. But then here I am, there. here I, here I am telling him to have fun and like, <laughs> You know, it's yeah, yeah, but I, I feel like sacrifice. That's part of, <laughs> it is part of the lightens the mood. Lightens the mood. It will. Well, I feel like once I get a little bit comfortable with them, I'll be. I should be good. Um. Yeah. So yeah, first speak, and you know the worst thing about like that age group, I feel like that is the most judgmental age group oh. ever. Oh, that, that's dude, why so you gotta hit talk about being. Breaker. Have you ever have you ever been like chirped by like a ten year old? That will ruin my confidence more than like being chirped by like a 40 year old, like a 10 year old. Like they are brutally honest and like, you know, they just say whatever. I got a good story. And, oh, I got a good man. Story. Talk about we a were, confidence I was, ruiner. I was running a summer session with like, it, it was, it was last year, last summer. The group was like, mm -hmm. it was like middle school, boys and girls, middle school, boys and girls. And it's two hours, right? So in the middle, there's an ice cut. We have a yeah. great first session, right? A great first session. Our comes, the Zamboni comes out. I go to the coach's room with everybody else. I don't know if I was the head guy for that, but I was out there. Come back out. Now I was taken over. Yeah, so I don't think I ran the first session, but I'm taking over the second. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, I just get, I'm, I'm starting to talk and I'm getting chuckles. I'm getting, <laughs> from the start, I'm getting chuckles. Oh, so I, I kind of rub it off, it. right? I'm like, I'm not. I'm not really you're I'm like, not buying into you're, this. I, I, you're, skin, you're boiling under your, your skin. Yeah, I'm like, what's boiling, going on here? Like, They're not listening. They're chuckling. So I finally stop. I stop what I'm saying. I think I was talking about passing. I'm like, all right. What's so funny? I'm like, still nothing. Right? Like, <laughs> They're like, you red as hell, boy. Yeah, like <laughs> kind of like, I'm still boy. getting chuckles. I'm still getting chuckles. Yeah. I finally said, it, said to the kid, I said, what, what is going on? I'm like, coach, coach. We, coach. Found your, we found your Instagram. So we found your Instagram. <laughs> so now I'm there. I'm like, oh, my oh gosh. God. Like, what am I like? So then yeah. I'm like, and like, I, <laughs> yeah, like I, I was like, I got an Instagram. Yeah, I do. I do. Like, yeah. Like, you have a shirtless pic on there. You have a shirtless pic. And they're like all <laughs> laughing. They're like all <laughs> laughing at me. Uh, and now uh, you can't recover from that. You can't recover yeah, from that. <laughs> you so I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, yeah, like I do. Like. I, I, Did you I just get off like, the ice? Did you get off like, the ice? Exactly. I think I, I think I just said like I, I didn't know what to say. End of the story. I deleted the I deleted the pick. At the end of the day, I don't need these a middle group schoolers. Of, making a fun group of, me. of eight year olds made you delete a picture on Instagram. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. You got bullied. See, dude, I'm, bullied. I'm telling you, man. Those those kids, man. They will ruin your confidence, man. Wow, oh, brutal. Oh, dude, that is can say anything. That is they unbelievable. Anything. They say anything. And we can go into one or two things now we, we're talking about. Do we want to go into building a nice roster or do we want to go into a little bit of neutral zone coverage? We're talking about neutral you zone. Choose. You choose. You choose. I'm going to go with, I'm going to ask you this, right? You're, you're going into coaching, right? We got a baby. Could go to overtime. It's overtime, right? I want you to tell me right now, what are your three NHL players all time that you're putting on the ice? Now you're not going to do. You're going to be dealing with high schoolers next week, but I want your three all-time NHL players for an overtime. Okay, this is tough for sure because I'm trying to incorporate, I, we, <laughs> trying to incorporate an old guy in there, like an older, you know, guy. Um, As you but <laughs> we kind of talked about this beforehand like if we're going like their skill level at 
their time is matched up against guys now. Like, oh. I, I'm not going no. with God. Oh my. You, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. it. Okay, give me your three, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go back at it. And my three are gonna win in the first two seconds of the game. <laughs> give me your three. Give me your three. Okay, I'm trying to put together a team. Okay, because I'm really thinking hard about the defenseman. I think my D that I'm gonna go with is Cal McCarr. Good choice. Just good both ways, obviously, and can score, get up and down the ice quickly. Um my second guy that I'm going to go with is Patrick Kane because Ooh. he's a Chicago guy and I mean he's great with the puck more of an he's going to pretty much be your offensive guy on the three on three great passer great shooter you know I'm not going to really rely on him too much defensively Um, so I'm trying to think of like a third who I could throw in the mix where I know if they're a forward they're going to be responsible enough to be back for me um, mm, 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 mm. and I'm I'm strictly thinking modern day right now. I'm not thinking you're not anyone. Even, you're that. not even touching the. Old I'm guy. not even entertaining them right now because uh, I want to hear your argument Wayne on Wayne Gretzky. Too. You're not touching Wayne Gretzky. I, I'm. I told you why. Uh, and um, um, who do I want as my third? If you don't I'm gonna say go Sydney with. Crosby. I was just, I was literally just about to say that. Okay. okay. Good choice. Crosby. Good yeah. choice. Because I feel like he is good both ways. I was li- good choice. Literally about to say that. Um, okay. So let's hear your reasoning. I, I like, I get the argument about those guys back but in I got the day. Some like, evidence. I totally I got some understand. Evidence. I got evidence and I got evidence for the listeners. All right. I'm reading a book right it. now. I'm reading a book right now. I mentioned on the last podcast, Mark Messier, No One Wins Alone. He's talking about his career and time with the Edmonton Oilers in the mid to late 80s, early 80s area. And he says in the middle of the book, he says they were honored to have a film crew follow them for two whole seasons. So yeah. he he's, yeah, not yeah, saying yeah. The name, he's not saying the name of the movie yet, but he's not saying the name of the movie. All of a sudden he names the movie. It's called The Boys on the Bus. Film crew followed mm-hmm. around those Oiler teams. I found the movie. <laughs> Yeah, I found I found footage of this team. It's on YouTube. It's called The Boys on the Bus. Usually, when you see highlights of these old games, they're from like that that high view, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Where high. You're like looking down, and it looks slow. It looks slow, but this film crew that filmed The Boys on the Bus, they are right there. They are on the bench. They are on the glass, and I'm watching video of Wayne Gretzky and Paul Coffey. Fly up the ice, like I've never, I've never seen uh, uh, anything like this. I've never uh, seen. I'm not. Like this. I'm not denying that. Like, well, granted, like, I'm not denying that. Like, for their time, like they were absolutely flying and dominating, one thousand percent. But you can't tell me that if you put him out there with Nathan McKinnon, that they're skating the same speed. No, no. Oh, Paul Coffey. They're not skating. I, I would argue. I would argue that Paul Coffey and Bobby Orr in a lap. I think Bobby Orr in a one lap. Would are you be kidding me? Him. Are you kidding me? What do you mean? It's one of the greatest skaters Dude. of all time. Yes, yes, I I agree. What do you think? But, what do you think they're stronger now? You think McKinney was stronger? I mean, yeah, he is but, way stronger. But so were, but, but so were they. Okay, I don't, yeah, I'm but it's like roster. a it's like a, it, 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 it's like a different roster. type of sh- hold on, it's like a different type of strength though. Like now with the all the technology and stuff that they can implement in their diet, their training, like everything about it what is about so Jackson? fine tuned. What about Bo I'm not I'm, push-ups. yeah, those guys push-ups. were great. Sit yeah, up, but push ups, but they've yeah, but they found now the NFL. that doing <laughs> listen, they found now that just because you can do a thousand push ups or bench. 500 it doesn't necessarily translate to you being the most effective player on the field yeah, you know I, what i mean I know, like that's why know, they're changing saying, the way people are training and stuff these days yeah but i'm not saying everyone's just benching a, and squatting i'm yeah but i'm saying a muscle is a muscle and when we're looking at the legs of bobby Orr in his prime and the legs of nathan mckinnon on the ice i'm saying it's a closer yeah. competition than people think 
okay, well, okay, hold on, I'll argue this. You say muscles, muscle. All right, let's take, let's take an average. We'll go an average. We'll go, we'll go a college sprinter. Okay, who's got pretty college hundred hundred meter sprinter or whatever it is? Um, Michael, let's Bowley, take him versus University of Georgia. Okay, sure, we'll take That's him. The guy I want. And let's take let's take um, the guy who just won um, world strongest whatever that bodybuilding competition is. If muscles uh, whoa, muscle, whoa, whoa, then whoa, he whoa, should whoa, be. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, it's a yeah. different sport. No, it's a different no. sport. I'm talking about two hockey players. I'm talking about Bobby Orr, and I'm talking about Nathan McKinnon. Okay, then you could say the same sport. thing about a then you could say the same thing about a linebacker and a running back. They could have the same legs and yeah. a r- running also, back will dust a linebacker. Not yeah, all but linebackers, but but that's also a size thing. I'm talking about skating. One of the most unique experiences in the world is you get the wind in your face. Yeah. I'm talking about my <laughs> so you got Sidney Crosby, you got Kale McCarr, yeah. and you got Patrick Kane. You're telling me they're going to be... Wait, wait, wait. who'd you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Sidney okay, Crosby, Patrick Kane, Kale McCarr. And who's your goalie? And who's your goalie? Ooh, I'm going to go... I'm going to throw Martin Brodeur. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Now we're even. Now we're even more even. Now we're even more even. That's awesome. Paul Coffey. I, I D. Wayne. Okay. Gretzky. Wayne yeah. Gretzky. And now I'm going to throw in a little bit of youth. Connor McDavid. Yeah. I'm going with an all Oilers lineup here. Yeah, Wayne you are. Gretzky. Connor Mc... Wayne. I, Wayne I'm not, Gretzky. I, I'm not knocking them in any way. Like, I respect what they did in their time period. I'm just saying, like, realistically, if. Are you talking? Are they playing? What gear are they playing with? What gear are they playing? With their own they gear, playing? their prime time. Gear. Okay, Greg, he's rocking. A okay, Jova. okay. Then I mean, come on. Whoa. The key- wait, I, wait, 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 wait. I just need to address one thing. If you now, look if, at Wayne, Wayne Gretzky's stats, this is like the Michael Jordan of, LeBron debate. Wait, 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 wait Michael Jordan this. LeBron. This is, this is no, this end. is not. This is like I'm Michael Jordan and you're Dylan Brooks. That's what the debate is. Right? No, no, <laughs> no. No. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me no. that Wayne Gretzky, who if you got rid of every single goal he scored, if you got a got rid of every single goal Wayne Gretzky scored, he would still lead the NHL history in points. I'm not arguing that part of it. I'm not arguing I, in that time. Yes, he dominated. I'm talking apples to apples of them. I'm saying right now, 3v3. It's the best yes, I know, is, and I'm one of the saying greatest episodes of all time. If no one's told me, and I'm saying episode. it's the greatest episode of all time. It is because I'm saying that it's never going to be solved because we'll never be able to we'll get a time solved. machine to get them to meet up. Solved by with the listeners, the, but with the speed and the skill of today, it just like it is what it is. And like the guy now, don't get me wrong. I think if Gretzky, now what do you think about this? If Gretzky right now was say. Say he prime. was, say he was our age, say he was our age. Right. Oh. And he in modern time. Right. So like he grew up like us with the same like technology and stuff. I think he would be at like those guys level. Yes. No he, like those guys. He'd be better. He'd probably be better. He'd, he'd be better than McDavid. Right. So I, I think if he had like that type of training and stuff, he would fit right in with right. those top but, guys. But, but, but here's the here's my and a lot of people bring this up. They, they say that the, the training and the technology of today, these players, like you got to watch this. You got to watch the boys on the bus. The, yes, the goalies struggle, right? The goalies were I mean, a totally different argument. Yeah, the goalies. I'm talking about the, the 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 speed and the hockey IQ, right? They, they're thinking the game. Well, the they, the they IQ is better. definitely the IQ is definitely there. One thousand percent, probably and the speed equal. And execution is too, but the, just the moves. There's a bit different moves. There's some different moves. Gretzky's not Michiganing the puck. I don't. He's not Michiganing. He's not doing the Michigan. No, no, no. They didn't have the I, necessarily the technology for it in terms of like how easy it is now to do. But he's snapping. But Al McGinnis. No, I. I no, I. I totally agree with that. With that. Now, I. I don't necessarily like in terms of like the edge work and stuff like that. I don't know if it's as good as it is now for 
average averages on the NA, in the NHL. You think I would say the edge work these days oh. is like the skating ability of some of these defensemen and stuff like uh, is yeah, unreal. I feel like the skating. I feel like you Paul Coffey, Bobby Orr. I mean, yeah, like those top even, guys have. Yeah, those top guys have really good skating. They're but, probably better. I mean, maybe on average, yeah, maybe because mm. yeah, because the game's better, right? The game's a bit faster now, right? The game is a bit faster. But well, I'm and like the way I3. the yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would love to like see like it'd be really cool to be able to put them in drills, right? Like do like oh, have exactly. some drills to see like the matchup of them. I'm do I bet you AI could do it one thousand percent. Yeah, they probably could. It, probably could. it probably could take that. Would actually be really cool if you could take. Like, like for instance, the LeBron and Michael Jordan debate, and like have AI like I somehow try. simulate, yeah, because that like sure obviously you could stats, do it. I'm sure with their stats you could create. Well, not not even their stats. It can like learn based off their movements. Like it can take all the data from every game that they've played, right, and it can track their movements and stuff, and be able to like implement that like so fine-tuned to like how they would match up against each other you know what you know know what i mean because it's like constantly learning and collecting data so it would learn so much about how they move the plays they make their shooting everything you know what i do be really cool close on close on that is tied into this a bit where you got playoff hockey occurring right now Mm -hmm. draft kings you got mgm i am amazed new sponsor draft kings (laughs) that'd be awesome I'm amazed. Oh my god, the Leafs scored three two now. Three minutes left. It's happening all over again. Oh, I'm amazed by the. Oh Jesus, they scored. Yeah, I'm amazed by the ability of DraftKings and these things to set the lines, the betting lines. Oh, dude, I'm amazed. Unreal. LeBron James twenty six and a half. He gets twenty six. Yeah, Jimmy Butler forty. These guys are so. I think the algorithms that they have mixed with combined with the guys that they have working for them is insane. Like in Vegas, it's absolutely insane. But even like um, how, what Matt, like, okay, if they can do the math to set the lines, why is yeah. somebody not doing the math? Like, why are people not doing the math to beat the lines? Like, you know what um, I mean? Like, why well, is there I, 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 Yeah, no, no, there are people doing that for sure. Yeah. Pe- oh yeah, there are definitely people, but not the masses can't do that. Yeah, the, you, it's too them. advanced I, there's people who sell like you can join like their discord group and they'll set you they'll give you like the bets to take and stuff for sure and there's guys who are pretty good at it um Amazing. okay so i want to give you this real quick who have you have you changed your sleeper team of the playoffs um, have you adjusted because i have I adjusted think I, I think after after monday's perform wednesday's performance no, I'm back on the Panther train, baby. I'm back on. Them. You're Cats back on the, the wagon. Cats oh, the dude, mascot. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they're giving them a fight here. Team six. I, I know. I didn't four. think they would get to that. I I put people five. I put five. I thought, I thought they would get one five. game on them. You want to know who my sleeper team is here? That I, I think is looking. I have two guesses. Yeah. One guess. One guess. One guess. Okay. I want okay. you to think of it. I want you to think of it. I know I'm okay. <laughs> what are you? Three, mind guy? Two. One. The Dallas Stars. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I knew That's it. That's them, dude. I knew it. You they're obviously there's there's two teams who have a higher power play percentage than them, which Edmonton has a fifty seven point one power play percentage. Which is seven point one. That is incredible. power play percentage. Fifty seven point one. <laughs> Winnipeg has a 40 you. Winnipeg has a 41 up. points no you literally cannot but the, see the thing that hurts them though the thing that hurts them is their PK they're at a 72% so it's like it's not, yeah, that's it's, that's not great that's that's the they give up just a lot the of goals though? is this just yeah the that's just in the play yeah yeah well LA's, they give up a LA's lot of goals power plays good too right i mean yeah, yeah. they're at a 27% okay so Winnipeg's at 41.7% and Dallas is at 40.9, okay? So that's one thing I really like about them. Their PK is pretty good, 80%. The other thing I like about them is how many goals they are not giving up. 
Oh, like their goals against average. So good. Yeah, he. I was just about to say Ottinger. He has, I think, a point point nine two five save percentage. He looks good. He's made the last game they played. He had some incredible saves that kept oh. them in the game. Like that won them the game. I mean, he is playing really good. Like they have one of the best goals against average right now, and they're putting up goals. Like their big time players are stepping up. Like their yeah, top they got some play. I you know who I think if you if, if listeners out there want a good watch. If you go on YouTube and type in Miro Heiskanen's first NHL shift, he does his sick. first NHL shift. It's four on four. He dominates. He has like three scoring chances, and he's skating. He this guy skates uh, similar Unreal. to Paul Coffey. No, he's actually probably. <laughs> I would say Miro Heiskanen is probably one of the best skaters ever to play. That's a hot take, but he, I, it's so true. I know. I I think he it definitely. I would agree with that. It is insane. And like good, like great puck mover, like their power. Yeah, man, their top guys are stepping up right now. Um, I think they look really good. Some of these other teams are looking, they look shaky. You know, obviously it's the playoffs and you're going to gain momentum as you move on. But at the same time, sometimes you can't sustain, you know, the way you're playing. Like it's hard to, if you can't get into a rhythm, you kind of slip away. Or if you go like right now, for some of these teams who now are battling for maybe a game six, game seven, now you go into the next series and now you're battling again because you're not playing oh. consistent and you win, say you win that series. I think it happened to the Rangers last year, right? They went to two game sevens and then by the time they got to the conference finals, they were burnt out. It was so and they got, I think they got swept. So interesting. If the Bruins had won last night, right? So if they had moved on, yeah, I believe they're playing the winner of Tampa Toronto. That, that could go – That the Tampa Toronto could go seven. I mean, they're playing right now, but that could go seven. And then the yeah, Bruins they are. are they around. are. Right, they're, right. They're sitting you, around. You get seven days off maybe, maybe more. Yeah, a week off, a week off. But Imagine you think that's ever, good or bad? Been, I wonder if there's ever been a team that's played all game sevens. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like seven. Yeah, seven, yeah, seven, yeah. Seven, seven. I bet I. Mm, that's a lot of hockey, in any Hold sport. That's season. a lot. Half a season. Yeah. Yeah. Years. Right. Uh, I. I, yeah. I don't. I don't think so. I'm gonna say no on that, but I'm sure some teams have come close. I think the yeah, Sharks. Th- what was the year the Sharks made a push? It was when they one of the later years with Joe, with Jumbo and is it when they lost to or beat Vegas? Um, yeah, on the five minute major, when the five minute yes, major one, yes. yeah, I think that was yeah, three was game like, sevens. I think that was really first round, second round, third round. Yes, and then they lost. Wow, the who did they the bottom? Capitals. Oh, mm. I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, Dallas is my sleeper team. I mean, they're 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 second seed, so it's not like that big of a sleeper. But like, still, like people are talking about other teams. Avalanche don't look good. No, that was I not don't. great last night. And great. and I mean they they're missing they're missing quite a few guys here right now. So um we got fifteen yeah, seconds so that, left. We got fifteen seconds left in this Tampa Bay Toronto game. There was just a missed oh. high stick call. They just panned to the oh. crowd. They got Matthew's mom is a little nervous, it looks like, but they also have the Tampa <laughs> Skybox. The Tampa player is wearing his Stanley Cup rings, showing it to the crowd. We have no, like, remember the GM? this remember this the series GM? is out of control. This the series is <laughs> guys are showing their rings, fans, fans, yeah. yeah, players dude, trying to fight fans in the penalty box. Yeah, dude, this series man this? is chaos. Wait, we got to stay on for the end of this. It's fifteen seconds. Okay, left. fourteen, thirteen. Oh. Headman clearing it. Oh. That's my guy. Game Off-corn. gets it out. Get it deep. Just get it deep. Seven, six, Game. five. Yes, they scored. There we go. I love game seven. Uh, I like Toronto, but I love game seven. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, all, it's three, two. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Dang, Devils are winning two. Ooh, they're making out. a push here. Two, three, zero. Three, three, zero in the third with 10 minutes left, and they're on a power play. So, all right. I'm going to go watch that game. Great podcast. I think that was a whole, that was a good episode that was, right that there. That was a funny episode. Somebody's on their the, way to work right now, just. In a good cackling way. away, probably my mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my my parents and your parents. That's about yeah, it. that's about it. Four list. My grandma tunes in too. Hi, grandma. All right. I love it. I will talk to you later. 
See you, I, buddy. Talk to you in a bit.